Pikes Peak. A racetrack like no other. Forged from rock and ice. Bent and twisted to the will of the mountain. Known to some as the Devil's Playground. But to most, as the race to the clouds. It's the only race in the world where you can skydive from the finish line to the start line. Finish line to the start line. Uh, hold up. Our insurance is not going to cover that. Oh, well, that's more like it. In 2023, Ford unleashed a monster to conquer the mountain. Colorado, USA. Home to a motorsport mecca. Pikes Peak is one of the, the most legendary epic events in motorsports. 12.42 miles, 156 turns. 156 turns, that's a lot. Most ray tracks, it'll be anywhere between 10 and 20 turns. Silverstone, 18. Le Mans might have 30 something. Pikes Peak is 156. The other uniqueness is the steepness from top to bottom. 4,725 feet of elevation change. That's four and a half Eiffel Towers stacked on top of each other. You are literally driving on the edge. Holy you know, it is just insane. That's Pikes Peak. Grassroots racers and the largest manufacturers in the world to use Pikes Peak, America's Mountain, as a proving ground. The race is split into various divisions, allowing drivers to bring almost any vehicle imaginable, each with a shot to be declared king of the mountain. Ford has been there since the beginning, in 1916. Setting records through the 20s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, all the way into 2020. Look at the way you pitch in this board. But we were excited to come back. We want to go there to win. We don't declare that we're going to do something if we don't think that we have the chops to do it. Period. So then, there's just one big question. What was the machine we were going to take to Pikes Peak? I would race the Mustang. For me, Fiesta WRC. We have our Ford GT. Mustang GT3. No. Whose idea is this stuff? Joey Logano. This NASCAR race car goes over 200 miles an hour. It has over 754 performance horsepower. It can race on any condition. This is the car. Forget that. For Pikes Peak, it's all about electric. Ready to rock? And the Mach-E 1400 has more instant torque than you can handle, and it accelerates like a magnetic roller coaster. Yeah. You want the Mach-E 1400 to take on Pikes Peak. Come on, man. You're kidding. It's an easy choice. Of course, it's rally cars. Aero, full boost from electric with combustion. Suspension to drive in every condition. Easy choice. Will Ford need to go fast? Like, really fast. What is good about the F1 car is good in the corners. You know, to get a bit more top speed. I think Max might be a little bit busy dominating F1 at the moment. So, what did the team pick? The choice is obvious. It's a full-size transit van. What? A van? No. Ford has all these great cars and they pick a van? I'm thinking about a regular van, right? You must mean some incredible, extraordinary, super van. That's right. The Super Van 4.2. Super what? The Super Van. The Super Van. That's a legendary name. To understand what the Super Van is, we're going to jump back 52 years to the United Kingdom, 1971. First Super Van actually started life as a Ford Transit. You know, it was one of those British quirky things, like scones and tea, brown sauce, whatever that is. It had a GT40 mid-engine mounted V8 put in there to try to stir up some attention, and it definitely did. Well over 150 miles per hour. Then came Supervan 2 in 1984. Supervan 2, shattering acceleration. And Supervan 3 in 1994, which upgraded to an F1 engine. 
But in 2022, Supervan accelerated into the 21st century. This was an all-electric platform and it looked very unique. It's really lightning fast. 2,000 horsepower. What? How much? 2,000 horsepower in the transit van. Oh my goodness, what have we just built? <laughs> And then we start to talk about what are we going to do with Supervan 4. Let's go out and do some really cool things with it. Take the Supervan to the next level. We knew that it would be a, a really good starting point to attack Pike's Peak. Is it? <laughs> OK. So the objective was simple. Climb the mountain and conquer the mountain. Win the class and beat the Pike's Peak Open record. Nine minutes, 24 and a half seconds. Think you can beat that? Yeah, let's do it. But who's going to be crazy enough to drive that thing up a mountain? You need someone that's got experience. You need somebody that knows the circuit. And that's why we wanted Ramon Dumas. Doesn't he hold the record for the fastest time of Pikes Peak? He sure does. Romain was the overall Pikes Peak winner in 2014 and 2016, set the fastest ever record in 2018, won Le Mans twice, and is a general badass. He is the right driver for this. When I saw it the first time, I said, okay, this could be good. Yeah, I think the mountain was calling me back. You've got the driver, you've got the van. I bet you think this is going to be easy. <laughs> oh, how wrong we were. The last vehicle that you're going to pick to race Lakes Peak is a van. <laughs> it's a big vehicle. Now, if we want to seriously race and beat a record at Pikes Peak, we probably need another super van. And that's where we decided that building Supervan 4.2 was the right way to go. In Austria, the team started turning Supervan 4 into a mountain climbing machine. First, we would have to shed a few pounds. We had to remove 400 kilograms. That's like removing the weight of a horse. <laughs> Anything that wasn't needed was taken out of the car. But it's not just that. There was other choices that had to be made, you know, different ride heights, different rakes. Electric motors, inverters, the suspension, the handling, the calibration for it, the batteries, controlling the temperature for it. How are we getting on? We optimized almost every element to know that we could get to the mountain and at least be competitive. So how long do you need for a project like that? A couple of years would be nice. We had about six weeks. Six weeks? <laughs> <laughs> Despite that, Super Van 4.2 was ready. And boy, it's just wild. We tested on the track, but until we got to the actual mountain, we were in the dark. What a beautiful morning. Day one of testing on the mountain, and the team were up early. This would be the real proving ground. We were straight into it. Car the car. Okay. Good. Like a video game. The course is split into three levels, each with their own unique challenges. A bottom section, you kind of want like a GT kind of race car. Then you need a nimble car to get around all the hairpins. Then you need some kind of off-road rally car to take up all the bumpy section at the top. You have to, to find a solution that the car will accept everything and you will be fast everywhere. Good thing you've got a chance to practice the entire circuit then. Right? You don't get the opportunity to practice on the entire circuit. What? You can't even do an entire run? On race day, you've got to piece it all together. Is there a circuit where you don't get to do an entire lap before you race? Maybe there's not. Our first day was at the very top, starting in a place called Devil's Playground. 
Devil's Playground sounds lovely. It was freezing. The wind was howling. I suggest we do the change now for the wing. We go the ring higher and the car lower. It's like a jet engine just firing up the hill with its plumes of dust coming out the rear ducts. It's being hoovered up from the aerodynamics. The air gets much thinner the higher you go, and that's why you see all Pikes Peak vehicles have these huge rear wings. It acts like an airplane wing, only upside down. It's one of the easiest things to do to start to get downforce to help with the vehicle handling. Nice. Sounds like it's all running smoothly. So, uh, oh, spoke too soon. We, we were this morning trying to improve the setup in terms of, you know, of riding the bumps. We for sure broke a small part of the transmission. Yeah, we got a big problem with the transmission. Because it's very, very bumpy. Pikes Peak is interesting because it's a public road. It's not a maintained racetrack. There's a lot of wear and tear. Not only the daily traffic, but also the weather wreaks havoc. It literally moves and lunges because you're on the across, you're on ground that's constantly changing. It's treacherous. Thankfully, having someone like Roman helps you because Roman knows the road inside out, knows every bump, every corner. Because it is a tourist mountain road, they've got a very tight window and a very limited number of runs. Once 8.30 comes, you're done. The team spent their time between testing on the mountain and fine-tuning at the raceway. Roman was giving a lot of feedback to give him the response in the vehicle that, that he needed to be able to push it to the limit. But there were certainly points of, uh, of frustration. Right now, you are scared because he's jumping so much. You understand what I mean? So, you got your wheel crash. I think what you need to hear or want to hear is, it's going to be fixed. OK, all right, good. Okay. Try to do, of course, all the improvements we've just discussed. <laughs> Ah, it's going to be a few late nights for you guys. Yeah, there, there's always ch challenges, but we knew we had the, the right team, the right people, and now we just can't wait till race day. Testing over. Time for the big reveal. People were just intrigued. What have they, what have they bought? I don't know what that is, but I like it. <laughs> Cameron, that thing looks aerodynamic as hell. I think it's definitely crazy looking, but you don't see vans go up the mountain. Nobody's bringing up a van, except for Romain Dumas. Winner of Pike's Peak. Honestly, I'm excited to see how he does. Super Van blew everyone away. The only problem with it is you don't get third row seating. I can't take my family or do grocery shopping with it. Okay, almost everyone. As the race draws near, it's time to buckle up. Back live from the 101st running of the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. Kyle Hire joined again. You're with all of your other competitors. So you just feel the nerves. We've done everything to the best of our ability. I think we're quietly confident. We've learned a lot through the testing and development, but it all comes down to this one run today. Robin shoot. Look how fast that thing is. This could be a historic run. The first time you do the full lap is on race day. It doesn't matter what you've been doing the last month in your tests. There's no second chance. There's no more laps. It's a one-shot deal. One run and done. Romain Dumas also preparing for his climb up the mountain. It was a crazy idea, but now it's time to deliver. The aspiration is to break a record. Under nine minutes was our target. You just get called up in the box. Go. Here goes Romain Dumas, and he begins his climb up the 12 and a half mile track. Once they take that first turn, they're out of sight. Then you're holding your breath the whole time up the mountain.
everything seems to be in slow motion. The emotions are just all over the place. You just want to hear he's got to the top. It all can fall apart in an instant. But we knew we were close. You start to think there's an opportunity for the overall win. And he's going to swing through this final corner. And let's see what Romain Dumas can do. And then the time comes up. We've beaten the record. Hell yes. And we done it. We smashed it. Blew it out of the park. The Supervan won the Pikes Peak Open Division in a lightning fast eight minutes, 47 seconds. We smashed the Open Class record entirely, so it was nearly 40 seconds. It's, it's all targets achieved. Instant elation, but peppered with... Joy, vindication, pride. Disappointment's the wrong word. Oh. We come that close to winning overall. If we'd have just gone a bit faster. Yes, we had the goal of winning the class and setting a record in the class. But you always want to deliver to a, to a higher level. Robin Shute was the fastest, and then we went second in Supervan. If you sat Robin's car next to the Supervan, you can see the differences, the physical differences between them. Ordinarily, that's not the vehicle that you would choose to go and race at Pikes Peak. And we come that close to winning overall, so yeah, huge achievement. There's a lot packed in to why we did this. Yes, it was one van taking one run up the mountain in the competition but everything that we're learning here, we can apply to our road cars. So all of our electrified road cars going forward are gonna be better because of what we're doing at Pikes Peak. If someone came up to me and said EVs are boring, man, I would just show them a picture of that thing and be like, are you sure about that? Man, pretty cool actually. Pretty That's cool. crazy. I think this is the essence of Pikes Peak, more of this. It looks fantastic. It makes you smile every time it goes by. That instantaneous torque is a little scary. People don't expect a van to do what this van is doing. It's our e-transit super van, and it's a rocket ship. I think that brings this epic journey to an end. Or does it? <laughs> this seems to be only the beginning. We're not done doing cool stuff with electric vehicles. Oh boy, okay, what are we signing ourselves up for? What on earth are they gonna come up with now? What obscure ideas. <laughs> <laughs>